Amidst the blustery, stormy winds of Roka, there are many floating chunks that circle around endlessly. One of these chunks happens to be a rock, unsurprisingly. But this rock is different. Somehow, even when being whipped by the gales of the planet, it floats with another smaller rock on top of it. How did this happen? Well, the story of this pair is far more dramatic than you could ever fathom. Zack, the creator of the game, gave an explanation of the origins of this pair in a video nearly 10 years ago. One example I'll just give you now is the extremely mysterious floating rock with non-floating rock on top, which came all the way from back here, the planet Barrow, the desert planet. Um, there was this peculiar rock that developed a strange ability to just float off into space. And now one of them just must have just floated off in this direction and then pew, got sucked into this one of the storms in the planet Roka. The floating rock is obviously a strange occurrence. Defying gravity, especially at the speeds of the Rokan winds, being the magnitude of hundreds of tornadoes is insane, especially for an inanimate object, although it is clearly animate. How did it access these powers? What if I told you that it had something to do with the people on the planet Barrow? Barrow is known for its deserts and canyons, but also its technological prowess. This rock may have been an intentional or unintentional experiment by the scientists there. The non-floating one? Well, I'm not exactly sure how that got off the planet, but maybe the floating rock picked it up along the way. But seriously, what caused this unique circumstance to occur? It's possible the stones simply landed on the rock and they were able to clasp onto each other. There also could have been a process of magnetism, in which the minerals attracted to each other to keep themselves together. Although we don't know exactly what types of stones there are, these are my best guesses. The floating rock is reddish-brown, which comes up with two possible results. One was named Scoria, which is made through volcanic activity. So how would that work? Well, it wouldn't. It would have to come from Shias, if we're speaking in those terms. However, I think the likelihood of it being raw red sandstone fits perfectly with Barrow's climate. Non-floating rock, on the other hand, has a color scheme of barrel, and bauxite seems to be the most likely candidate for what it is. That means barrel might be made of bauxite, or it could be completely made up. Also, bauxite is a huge source of aluminum, which is likely, if that is the actual rock, how they were able to build a city. Another possibility is because the floating rock, well, floats, as well as seeming to have some sentience, it could have moved itself to catch the non-floating rock. Besides floating, the floating rock may have more powers. The secret of the floating rock allows you to kill the rock in exchange for taking control of another creature. It's very well possible that it has mind-controlling powers, the ability to move and change the thoughts of someone or something. Could it be that the floating rock is not only a master in physics, but psychics? Another theory is that the secret of the floating rock is an outside force. I mean, the scientists could actually have a grasp on this rock. They might be using it as a way to explore other worlds, and it just so happens that it has a pebble on top of it. Considering they were able to make spaceships, the rock could be the equivalent of a satellite. It may have been a test subject before making the Lost Probe. On the other hand, where are the rockets? Either of these theories are valid, 
Although I would lean towards the secret being the rock's own telekinetic proficiency as the evidence more supports that. So, what is the relationship between these two rocks? It's hard to tell, to be honest. We don't exactly know whether the non-floating rock was attracted and wanted to be on top of the bigger brother, or if it accidentally met its fate. It's unclear what the non-floating rock's opinion is. The reason I say this is what happens next in the saga. The next part in the in the floating rock saga, I thought I'd give non-floating rock some focus. So this is the ultimate betrayal of non-floating rock, and there the story continues <laughs> in the very exciting non-floating rock saga. I trusted you, and you gave me this. The ultimate betrayal of the non-floating rock rocks this story dramatically. Why would this happen? First, this seems to happen near a green part of Roka's many chunks of land. But how and why did this tragic event happen? The non-floating rock is confirmed to be sentient because it jumps off the floating rock in the card art, but why did it go onto the floating rock in the first place if it were just to betray? It must have been caught by the wind, lost all control in the blustery weather, until being caught and possibly saved from an endless encirclement by the floating rock. The floating rock likely used its powers to do this. If so, then why is this non-floating rock so eager to get off? It's fair to assume it wants independence. It's limiting to stay on top of a slightly larger rock for the rest of one's life. For this pebble to make a future, it must release from the confines of the floating boulder. It wants to upgrade, to grow up, like how the ability trades the original card for a bigger creature. And it's found its chance when the floating rock was near solid ground. However, even if the non-floating rock left for solid reasons, why was this a betrayal? Simply put, this was from the floating rock's point of view. Sure, the smaller friend felt locked up to some degree, but the floating rock found this to be a chance to have someone to connect to. It's not often you find a sentient rock in space, right? So when this happens, it's deeply saddening to the bigger friend, now friendless. Powerful, but alone. That is my theory of the rocks. Shoutouts to Daniel Zack Game who recommended this to me. And remember that happiness is a warm puppy.